Okay, we've now come to the infamous general knowledge section. And really, this section has quite a bad reputation. Most people don't like it. There's this idea that a lot of people have that you just can't study for general knowledge. It's completely random stuff. And you just have to get lucky, basically, if you're going to get any marks. But that is definitely not the case. There is definitely a way to study for general knowledge, and you definitely should do so. Because in the IMAT, at least all the IMAT tests after 2019, general knowledge has been worth 12 questions. That's 18 marks. That pretty much makes it the second most important topic tied with chemistry. So this is not a section that you want to skip. Now, I'll give you the following piece of motivation for why you should study general knowledge. You are competing with people for places in medical school or dental school when sitting the IMAT. That means that you have to be better than the majority of people that take the test. And think about who your competition is. These are aspiring medical students, so that means that they're probably going to be quite good at things like biology and chemistry. But things like literature, philosophy, history, that type of stuff, these are not subjects that most medical aspirants study. Now, obviously, you should not start buying textbooks and start studying history or philosophy or anything like that. That is a complete waste of time and it's overdoing the general knowledge section. So don't do that. I'll show you what you actually have to do. But first, let me show you what a general knowledge question looks like and what the IMAT is actually looking for. So here we have a typical example of what could be an IMAT style question. Which of the following institutions was founded by Plato? And then they've given us the options here. Now, some people would look at this and think, I mean, what is going on here? Why is the IMAT asking me something so specific? How am I supposed to know this? And how am I supposed to prepare for this type of question? It's so random, it makes no sense. But that is not the case. This question is not random. And really, think about it logically. Do you think they'd be giving away seats to medical school just based on pure luck? Of course not, that would be stupid. This question is specifically designed to test for something. So what are they testing for in this question? Well, basically, if you have ever studied philosophy in your life, and not even studied, if you've even just done a crash course on philosophy, you would likely know the answer to this question. Every philosophy student on Earth would know that Plato was the founder of the Academy. So what the IMAT is actually doing here is rewarding students who have some knowledge of philosophy. And it's going to be very simple questions. It's not going to be something like an in-detailed analysis of one of Plato's books or anything like that. No, it's going to be very, very simple. So really, the way you get good at general knowledge is by knowing a little about a lot of different fields. Now, what types of fields should you study for general knowledge? Well, really, when it comes to the content, there's a few things to focus in on. First of all, academic fields, or more specifically, academic fields that are not science-based. Now, there are some fields that the IMAT tests more often than others, and I'll actually do videos on these fields so that you can actually know which ones to study for. And I'll also give you a technique for each of these fields and what exactly in these fields you should focus your time on. So as an example, literature is a field that they love asking questions on. And in the next video, which will be on literature, I'll explain to you how you study for the literature subsection of general knowledge, if we want to call it that. And I'll do the same for all the other fields that are important for the IMAT, like history, philosophy, history of science, and so on. Now, besides academic fields, there are some IMAT-specific topics that are worth studying. Now, in the coming lessons, I'll actually show you what these specific topics are. But as an example, I can say that the European Union is a topic that is often brought up in the IMAT. So there is some things you should know about the European Union. And again, I'll explain exactly what you need to know about the European Union in a future video. Okay, and then a final point on content to study. Anything that is Italian in nature gets special priority. Now, what I mean by this is that when you're studying, for instance, economics or philosophy, then pay careful attention to any Italian philosophers or any Italian economists, because these are more likely to show up in the IMAT. After all, the IMAT is an Italian exam. Okay, that was a bit about the content of general knowledge, but how do you actually study for it? Well, here's the thing. You don't really study for it in the traditional sense, in that you won't buy a textbook for economics and then learn everything there is to know about economics. That is a complete waste of time. You can't learn an entire field just for potentially one question in the IMAT general knowledge section. That is a complete waste of time. What instead you should do is focus in on specific areas within these broader fields, because there are certain areas within these fields which are more likely to be assessed than others. Now, these specific areas are field-specific, so I'll cover them in the coming lessons. 
And this is also quite important. When studying for general knowledge, you don't have to actively study it the same way that you would, for instance, biology or chemistry. When you're studying biology and chemistry, you want a really detailed understanding of things. You want to learn things and then you want to do practice questions on them to fully make sure that you understand concepts. That's not what you do for general knowledge. You want to quickly absorb many facts, put them to your notes, and that's it. You don't want a full understanding of economics or a full understanding of philosophy. You just want to learn high yield points about these certain topics. Now, I recommend you study general knowledge the following way. Most of your time during the day will go to things like biology and chemistry. But when you're done with those for the day and you're too tired to keep studying them, then maybe spend an hour doing general knowledge. Because the studying for general knowledge is not active. I mean, you aren't trying to master economics or master philosophy or anything like that. You're just trying to jot down some basic facts. So it's a good thing to do at the end of the day when you're too tired to do anything else. And another thing that's quite handy as well is to add it into your day-to-day -day life. So for instance, when you finish studying for the day and you maybe wanna watch some TV, rather than watching a sitcom, watch a documentary, maybe a documentary about Italian history or about philosophy or something like that. That is a good way to learn passively. Now, another very important thing, I recommend you use Anki flashcards or an alternative to Anki, but really you need to use something that has active recall technology. Because general knowledge contains a lot of facts and you won't remember these things if you just quickly read about them or quickly watch them on TV. That won't help you. You have to actually jot it down and then test yourself via flashcards. So use Anki. It is super essential for general knowledge. Now, you should also do practice questions because doing IMAT style practice questions will give you a good understanding of what type of questions the IMAT likes to ask. Now, where can you find these? Well, there's plenty of general knowledge IMAT style questions on IMAT Buddy. And of course, there is also the past IMAT papers. Okay, really, that is all I have to say about the general knowledge section. And we'll actually look at the details of how you study for the specific topics in the coming videos.